Welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at MoTT, which is a brand new multiband dynamics plugin from Slate Digital. I've got a load of sound demos and I'm gonna do a little bit of a walkthrough for the plugin. So let's get right into it. To be completely transparent, Slate Digital are supporting this video and they've given me the plugin for free for testing purposes, but everything I'm saying is my own decision and choice. There's no script or anything like that. It's part of their all access pass, which you can get a 30 day free trial of to test out any of their plugins if you'd like to, or you can subscribe to their all access pass on a monthly basis to get the plugins, or you can buy any one of the plugins with a lifetime license. So with that out of the way, let's take a good look at this plugin. It's based on the classic and famous OTT preset in Ableton's multiband dynamics plugin. And you've probably also seen the OTT standalone plugin from X for records. Now the issues with those are that if you don't have Ableton, you can't use it. And the standalone OTT plugin, I just find that it's not versatile for a wide range of applications. This is how the plugin opens up. I should quickly say that you can resize it from the bottom right corner. There is an easy mode and an advanced tab that has a whole bunch more functions, which is really why I'm interested in the plugin because you can dial in everything just perfectly. It's quite an intuitive and easy plugin to dial in. Let's take a listen to it. So I'm gonna bypass it at the bottom corner here. Let's take a listen with. So it's that classic upwards, downwards compression that you're familiar with, but very few people would use this on 100%. It's quite intense. So even if I pull that back a little bit, the amount dial, it's pulling up a lot of that detail, especially in the high end. I'll go into a lot more detail about how this effect works when we look at this advanced tab. But for now, you know, most people will be using this in a much more intuitive way. You're just doing it by ear. What we have are three quick set buttons here. The first one is the classic OTT settings. There's another one called hip hop that tries to preserve a bit more of the low end and then Vox that's all aimed at clarity. And you can see that the gain amounts for each band have been adjusted with each of these. So on the hip hop one, we're reinforcing the low end a little bit more. If I choose a different bass sound like this Reese bass, you can hear if I bypass, it makes a huge difference to the whole tonal balance of the sound. But in this case, it's a little bit too much high end. So you could just reduce the compression just on the high band, for instance. Or you can use these two tone controls to reduce the presence or add more and also further reinforce the low end. So these two controls work a little bit like an EQ, but I'll show you what the curves look like if I boost this up or pull this down. It's not just a typical high boost. It's a little, it's got a little bit more of a shape to it and it tends to sound quite good on these bass sounds. But what I was doing during the sound example was just reducing the compression just on the high band. So if I adjust the amount, they all move together, but you can also set these to custom amounts. And then as you adjust them, they all still move together. And this sort of locks in the cohesion of the preset. Now you'll notice there was a little bit of a, a gain difference when I bypassed. So there's an input and output gain here along with meters. And if you adjust one whilst holding shift, they move together. So you can push the input up and it will take the output down. I really like plugins that handle the gain compensation like that for you. I want to show you the presets because I have been happy with the way the presets work. Often in some plugins, you know, the presets are just sort of thrown in there as an afterthought. We're going to use MoTT on an acoustic drum kit. So I'm just going to go to the drum bus and one of these two bus driver, bus platinum. I think I'm just going to choose this one. You can hear how MoTT is really reinforcing that low end. It's pulling through all the detail, which you can hear here. But it's also helping that low end sound more solid. So it's uh, sort of cutting away when it goes below a threshold so that you're just left with a really strong kick drum and nothing else. Let's take another listen. That's really cool. I would probably dial this in maybe just a little bit like that. I might lower the high or reduce the high tone a little bit because those hi hats and cymbals are quite intense. Yeah, that sounds great.
and I'm sure some of you noticed that the clipping was turned on here, which is pulling just more saturation. It's sort of like a soft clipping sound, and we can adjust that clipping in the advanced menu, which I will get into in just a moment. You can also change the type of compression, soft knee or hard knee, and whether the compressor is reacting to the peak of the signal or the RMS. I found I tend to get much better results on RMS mode, but this really is a sound design tool, so just use it however you want. And now I'm finally going to go onto this advanced mode, so pressing this button up here. This looks quite cramped, so just adjust it to fit your screen size really well. I like plugins that can just be sort of fluidly and dynamically resized like this. It makes life a lot easier, especially when you're working on sort of high resolution displays. I can appreciate that compared to the easy mode, this probably does look quite confusing. So turn on the tooltips at the top corner, just hover over something, it'll tell you what it is, and then adjust it and then listen to the sound difference yourself. That's honestly the best way to learn how to use plugins like this. And the reason that I like this advanced mode so much is that it lets me use that classic OTT effect, but actually have control over it. And this is an issue I've had with using it in the past. I'd never use it on stuff like mix buses or any really sensitive material because I just found it so difficult to dial in a good sound. With this advanced mode, you can exclude frequencies from the compression. You can add a high pass or a low pass filter. You can adjust the threshold and ratio of all the downwards and upwards bands. It's easy to adjust the attack and release of any bands, the amount of any band. What it makes it even more special is that you can adjust all of these together. So you can adjust all the downwards bands as one, all the upwards bands together, including their ratios for expansion or upwards compression. So what I'm going to do is use this on something I would never normally uh, use OTT for. I'm going to use one of the presets, Master Gold Bath, that sounds kind of cool. And let's turn it off. It's just pulling so much more detail up. So I'm going to dial back the amount. I mean, it just sounds brilliant afterwards. It's a little bit bright, so I'll probably pull the tone back. But what I like is that I can just adjust these exactly the way I want. So I can have less upwards compression on the high band. Maybe the low end, I actually want to have more upwards compression and heavier compression there. Let's pull that back in. Another great feature is that you can solo or bypass any of the bands. So let's just solo this low end. I like that. And I can decide maybe I want less compression there. I can let the bass just breathe a little bit. That's so much better. It's not the preset's fault, it's just now I can control it the way I want. So let's take that out of solo. And now the bass is moving in a way that's a lot more faithful to the original mix. But it still sounds better than when it's bypassed. Honestly, it's this sort of control that just matters to me so much, just being able to very easily dial these things in. I know I've said it several times. I just want to show you a few more settings. So I've got some more audio playing. First is that you probably saw me do this earlier, but you can adjust the crossovers between the bands just by clicking and dragging. You can also remove bands entirely. You don't have to have a three band system. You can add another band back in here. So now we're in full multi-band mode. You can adjust the slope between these bands. So depending on your material, you might find that a steeper slope is better for some sound design situations. I tend to prefer a more gentle slope, especially on full mixes and acoustic material. I find it sometimes works better. I'm going to use that original lead example to talk about the thresholds here. So let's take a listen. And I'm just going to solo in on this mid band here. So let's move this one all the way to the top. We're just going to look at the bottom one. What this is, is an upwards compression threshold. Anything below this level is going to be boosted up depending on the ratio of that upwards compressor. That's more upwards compression. This band can also work as a, a sort of a gate or a downwards expander, where when the signal falls below the threshold, this time it, it's cut out completely. So let's take a listen to this. This upper threshold is for the downwards compression. When it passes that threshold, the compressor is trying to duck it down just like traditional compression. And the ratio can be pushed so far that it basically goes to regular limiting and beyond. 
So if I pull this one down, you can hear the compression ducking that down. And then you may want to push up the level of the band to make up for that difference in compression there. So that was quite a subtle example, but let's try doing something completely crazy with sound design. So I've prepared this sort of like strummed percussive guitar loop. I'm just going to turn Moti T off. It's just an acoustic guitar muted and being strummed. And I'm going to try to transform this into something completely different, just like a rhythmic texture. And this is what people often do with OTT. They don't even try to preserve the original sound. They just create something crazy. Let's go for it. Let's go on to the advanced mode. So I'm going to turn the clipping on and I'm going to pull the clipping down for all the bands. And I'm going to adjust the output gain. Let's turn the high end down a bit. Low end up. I mean, it's not going to suit every track, but you've created sort of like this rhythmic texture. You could sidechain that, you could add a bunch of reverb to it and delay, then sidechain it, and you'd basically create this sort of morphing texture that you could just sit underneath your track, just from something as simple as some basic strummed guitar like this. And I think that's what's always been special about plugins that have this sort of OTT style effect is that you don't have to be too precise and gentle with them. They really are sound design tools. You can just push things into any direction you want, pull the amount back a bit, and just blend it by ear. They're definitely plugins where you're sort of supposed to break the rules on them a little bit. There are a few more features such as the attack release and the timing styles, which is really interesting to sort of play around with. I'm not going to go into any more detail in those because I know this video is already getting quite long. The best way to get a feel for the attack and release is to load it up on your own material adjust the timing dial here and you hear that sometimes it lets a lot of the transients through and sometimes it just completely washes out the sound but the best way to get a feel for that is to just experiment with it on your own material so that's it for this video but remember if you want to try out this plugin just check the link in the description you can get a 30-day free trial to test out this plugin and all of the other plugins that slate digital make so thank you very much for watching any questions as usual put them in the comment section down below and i'll do my best to reply and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.